All right, it's been a while. Um, I haven't uploaded a video since uh, towards the beginning of January. Um, so this is, I think, my second video of, of 2023. Um, but I'll get on to why I've had um, such a long break uh, in just a little while. Today, I want to show you the goodies that I recently bought from First Light Optics. I say recently, it was about a couple of months ago, but uh, everything was out of stock um, as, that I wanted as per usual. Uh, so I thought I'd just do a quick unboxing video and have a quick chat uh, to update you guys with uh, where I'm at and the future of the channel, etc. And if you're wondering what on earth I'm doing with my hands, I'm not doing something dodgy, but um, Hugo is sat uh, just off camera, like right here, so I'm giving him a fuss. Uh, so, let's get started. Um, now, as I said, I ordered this kit um, a good couple of months ago now, uh, so I've had to wait a long while for this. I've um, not opened the box yet, I've just cut all the tape, um, but this is um, unopened, and Hugo's having a good sniff. Yeah, there you go, good boy. And... Do you know, the first thing that I'm going to say is that um, I'm really pleased that First Light Optics have moved away from the plastic packaging that they were using before to something uh, that is sort of more sustainable and recyclable. So it's really nice to see some um, of this cardboard packaging um, in here instead. So that's, um, so that's really nice. Um, although, <laughs> typically I've just vacuumed in here and now there's a load of cardboard bits on the floor, but nah, never mind. Uh, okay. Do you want to see the main bit first or the main bit last? I'll do the main bit first because um, that's what everyone's here for, isn't it? So um, I have bought many things actually, but the biggest thing and certainly the most expensive thing uh, that I bought recently is a Daystar Quark solar filter. Um, if you haven't heard of one of these before, it is a filter that, um, sits in front of your camera um, so that it doesn't cook the uh, the sensor uh, and it allows you to take incredible um, shots of the sun. So um, I've been wanting to get into solar imaging for quite a long time, but as you'll see from the price on the side there, it's a pretty expensive thing to buy. Um, and that's just for that, There's, you need more than uh, just that as well. So I'm um, really excited for uh, trying this out. It's come at a great time because I'm just about to lose all of my Astro Dark for a good couple of months. So um, doing uh, deep sky astrophotography at night is um, something that I have done in previous years and I might do this year if I feel like I can be bothered um, without any Astro Dark. But obviously your images aren't going to be anywhere near as good as what they would be in proper Astro Dark conditions. Um, so this gives me something to do for the next couple of months and the best part is that it's during the day so um, it doesn't affect my sleep or, or anything like that so i'm really really excited to um to try this out um so that's the first thing that i bought what other goodies are in here do you know i, I bought these so long ago that i've partly forgotten everything that i bought um this is oh yeah this is not particularly exciting at all actually, um, but something that is incredibly uh, useful. I bought an extra um, finder shoe, um, just a Vixen style finder shoe for my um, William Optics GT71 um, so that I can um, put the ZWOSI Air Pro onto it because um, at the minute I just kind of um, attach it to the um, eyepiece holder um, on the tripod of the mount. Um, on the EQ6R Pro, and, and it's not an ideal solution. Um, it works fine, but what it does mean is that with this, I'll be able to have the um, ASI Air Pro attached to the scope, so that when I'm taking the scope on and off, um, and especially with cable management and things like that, ev everything is kind of already there, and if my mount is already outside, then I just need to lift my um, telescope onto the mount, and then everything else that I need is already attached. So um, it's such a simple thing. I can't remember exactly how much it was, about 20 quid or something, but um, such a simple thing, but that is going to uh, improve my um, setup no end just um, by having this um, like two inch piece of metal. So uh, yeah, not very exciting, but actually um, a really necessary uh, piece of equipment for me. Um, the next thing that I bought, um, and at the minute I'm looking, oh yeah, here it is, hidden under a load of cardboard. Um, this is a ZWO um, 
IR cut filter. Um, that is basically just uh, to attach at the front of the uh, Daystar. Um, just again, just you need a filter um, in there. So um, that's just something I bought. Again, that was about 20, 30 quid, something like that. It wasn't a, a huge amount. I'll leave links to in, in the description to all of the kit that I've bought so you can go and check it out um, if you want. But, um, but that's what that is. Next thing I bought is something that I've been after for a good long while, but um, just hadn't hit the button um, for whatever reason. I don't really know why. I think it's because I was reasonably happy um, doing what I was doing. Um, I've bought an electronic autofocuser. So I've got the ZWO on. I kind of, um, I don't know, I kind of feel like I'm part of their ecosystem now with ZWO. I've got the um, ASI Air. I've got um, a guide camera from ZWO. I've got my main imaging camera, the 533 is WO, and now I've got the autofocuser, but you know, it's all connected together, it's all easy, it all works, um, so um, I'm comfortable with that, um, so that's fine, but it just kind of feel like you're tied in a little bit like if you've got Apple products, if you end up, you know, with an iPhone, you're probably end up, going to end up with an iPad and a Mac and things like that and everything. If you're part of the ecosystem and have everything, then it all works really well, but if you want to integrate something else into it, then it becomes a bit more awkward. But, um, so I've got um, electronic autofocuser, that will obviously be very, very useful for um, my deep sky imaging. Um, even with my one shot color camera, you know, I, I focus at the start of the uh, night. I've never had an issue with focusing with the Batonov mask or anything like that. Um, but this is a bit of a future proofing bit of equipment as well, because where, well, when I eventually buy a mono camera, um, that will make my life a hell of a lot easier. As you're changing between filters, you can um, just automatically focus it, etc. Equally, um, if you're trying to do solar imaging and focusing manually, then um, you're probably gonna have a bit of a rough time of it. So um, this will be incredibly useful and necessary for that. So that will be going on my William Optics GT71 as well. Um, so that's exciting. Um, and then the last thing I bought, I think it's the last thing anyway, I can't see anything else in here. It's all covered in uh, cardboard dust. Um, this is just a Telegizmo's um, telescope cover. Um, the reason for buying this is that um, my wife's been very forgiving um, since we moved into this house um, about 18 months ago, well, about 20 months ago. Um, uh, and I keep it in the, um, in the kitchen. Um, my mount and telescope generally, that is. Um, but uh, I don't really want it there. She definitely doesn't want it there. And so uh, this means that I will be able to keep it in the garage. Um, I didn't want to keep my, um, my, my mount in the garage without having a cover. And the telescope will live up in the study where I usually film uh, my YouTube videos on the shelf. Um, so that will be fine. But this will also mean that um, I can when I finished imaging, just pop this cover on rather than having to bring everything back inside just on the off chance that it might have a little bit of rain for two minutes. So um, I'll probably still take the telescope off uh, just because, as I said, everything will be connected um, all in sort of one thing. So I'll just be able to unscrew the scope and take that off. Um, but the cover will be just for the mount. Um, so, um, but if I need to cover with the telescope as well, then I will be able to. Um, so um, that was, again, just another sort of purchase that I've been wanting to make for a while. They're not hugely expensive. I know that they are expensive compared to um, just wrapping it in a load of towels um, or something like that, but um, or, or just a, a bit of tarpaulin or, or something. But um, I know that this is going to work and it costs like 65 quid or something. So. Um, I, I'm not going to complain for that for that price. It's a bit more than what I would have paid for something that was a bit more makeshift, but it's something that was designed for this, so um, that will be no problem at all. It's not one of the higher end ones where you can just leave it outside all the time. Um, this is recommended on the website to only leave outside for you know a few days at a time, uh, up to a week, I think it said. So um, I'm not going to necessarily leave it outside all the time, but if I've got uh, a run of you know, two, three clear nights in a row, then it just means that I can leave the scope outside. And that is everything that I bought. Um, very, very expensive is what I will say. Obviously the Daystar Quark covers the vast, vast majority of that expense. Um, but there we are, that is all the kit that I've bought. Um, 
and if you're wondering where I've been for the past five months or so, um, then I thought I'd just give a bit of an update. If you're new to this channel, then you're probably thinking, what's he on about? Um, feel free to not watch the rest of this video if that's what you want to do, that's fine. Um, so back in sort of December time, um, I was starting to get a bit fed up with um, YouTube for a whole number of reasons, really. Partly my fault, I think, and then partly just sort of, I don't know, feeling quite stressed out with a number of things. Um, so I decided that I would take a break from January. I wanted to do it sooner, but if you'd been watching my channel for quite a while, you'll know that I started doing some sponsored videos towards the end of last year. Um, and that's part of the reason why I stopped um, YouTube um, for, for a while and, and had a break because um, what people won't tell you about brand deals and sponsorships is the pressure that they can put on you, um, which for the most part was fine. Um, I, brilliant, um, for example, were genuinely brilliant. Um, <laughs> I use that platform. Uh, it's a really, really good platform and um, they were really friendly, really helpful. They liked what I was doing. Um, and that was all fine. Um, other ones, less so, I would say, and they can apply quite a bit of pressure on you and making sure that it all, all works right and things like that. And um, they have certain timescales that they want you to meet and because you've signed a contract, then you kind of have to meet them and things like that. So it all just became quite stressful. Um, and I accepted a number of sponsorship deals that I thought were right for the channel. And I'd rejected quite a number of um, brand deals that I thought were nothing really to do with the channel or, or my audience. I'm not going to um, sell um, you guys anything that I don't think is right. Um, so uh, the one that sticks out is men's jewellery. Um, uh, you know, a lot of men wear jewellery. That's fine. I've got no issue with that. I don't. And so I can't... Um, realistically sit here and say oh hi everybody go and buy this ring that I've just bought um, it's amazing because I'm not going to wear it um, I don't believe in it so um, things like that so uh, I wanted to reevaluate um, where it was going with the channel um, there was also um, I started doing my starry sky news videos um, with all the right intentions I wanted to cover you know some equipment news some uh, targets that you could image that month and things like that but um, it became quite uh, resource heavy to research new topics uh, every month to talk about and I kind of felt like I was filling the time just to make the video worthwhile doing um, and at that point I hadn't done much in the way of deep sky astrophotography for a while because the weather had just been rubbish as is often the case um, in the UK and, and lots of other places as well so it was supposed to be a bit of a thing to be able to do once a month when the weather's not great, um, just to be able to carry on doing some videos and try and add some value to, to you guys. Um, but it didn't really work out that way and it kind of took started, I, I think, started taking the channel down a path that I didn't really want to go down. Um, I started the channel because when I started astrophotography, there were some helpful videos out there, um, you know, Chuck's astrophotography, um, Trevor from Astro Backyard, you know, there were a couple of channels that I found really helpful, um, but there wasn't loads of information out there. Um, and that was my reason for starting the channel, is to try and help people that had been in my situation before. Um, and that's kind of how most people found my channel, I think, is from either a tutorial that I've done, whether that's from reviewing some equipment, um, or how to do certain things like take calibration frames or you know process an image in Photoshop in you know in a really basic workflow that sort of thing. I think that's why people have subscribed to my channel uh, because whenever I do a video like that, they're generally the most watched videos on my channel. Um, and then I started doing these other random videos um, that didn't really fit with any of that. So um, I just wanted to take a bit of a break away to say what what am I actually doing with Astro Exploring and what's the future of it. Um, and I also wanted to focus a bit more on my website, uh, which I'm still doing now. Um, so that's going to continue. I'm not going to be uploading a new video every week, I don't think. Um, it's hard, you know, I work full time. Um, me and my wife have got a 15 month old um, daughter. So, you know, that takes up a lot of time. <laughs> she takes up a lot of time rather than she's not that. Um, 
And yeah, on top of, you know, also just having a life uh, in general and occasionally sitting down and watching something on the TV. Um, so, you know, you add all those things up together and it was just, um, it was taking up a lot of my time and I was getting quite worked up about um, having to work to somebody else's timeline with the sponsorship videos. And they weren't, if I'm being really honest, they just weren't videos that I particularly believed in. Um, so yeah, all of that's, gone away now i'm not saying i'm never going to do a sponsored video again i will but it will only ever be something that i think is valuable to you as a viewer and something that i believe in myself um but it'll be on a video that i actually want to make on astro exploring and it'll be a video that makes sense for this channel um so um so yeah that's where i've been that's what i've been up to you'll if you've been on my website recently you've probably seen in the past six months i've um uploaded um, or rather posted loads of new articles on there um, hopefully a lot of them are of use um, but I'm also in the process of migrating my website from my current hosting provider to somebody else um, so that's going to keep me busy over the next sort of month or so um, my website will probably go down for a few days um, when I actually hit the button um, to, to do the transfer um, so uh, yeah there will be some more videos coming um, I don't know what they look like yet. I haven't figured that out. I've been working on um, a number of um, other things this year that uh, have kept me busy, and I'll continue to, to do that. And, um, yeah, I think that just about covers it. Uh, when I get all of this um, solar equipment um, on my uh, scope and I start doing some imaging, then I'll definitely make some videos and tutorials. Uh, well, not tutorials straight away, because I don't even know what I'm doing at the minute. Um but what I need to do in the meantime, if you've watched this far through the video, then um, thank you so much because this has been very rambly and I didn't even really know what I wanted to say after I'd done the unboxing. So um, apologies for the uh, sort of self-indulgent uh, rambling. But um, what I need to do is buy a planetary camera uh, because my 533 isn't going to cut it for solar imaging. So I've got my eye on either the ZW-O174 or the 432. Um, 432 is a little bit more expensive, but it's a bit better matched to my William Optics GT71. Um, but the 174 will still do an amazing job, and I don't think posting an image of you know one that I've taken with the 174 versus a 432, we probably won't really notice much difference, uh, especially on social media where it compresses the shit out of everything. So. Um, I don't think there's going to be a huge difference. If you've watched this far in the video, leave a comment down below um, for what camera um, you would buy, either the 174 or the 432, because I just can't make my mind up. And I might do a poll on my um, community um, on YouTube in a couple of days' time to ask what everyone's verdict is. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, my first video in a long time. And uh, yeah, hopefully I will continue making more videos. Uh, the idea of turning the camera on and pressing record doesn't fill me with absolute dread and horror uh, like it did at the start of this year. So, uh, and I think if you watched my um, video back in January back, um, it's only, I mean, it's hardly got any views on it at all. Uh, the algorithm very much killed that video. Um, you could see I really wasn't into it. Um, I didn't sound enthusiastic. It wasn't me. Um, and yeah, I'm sorry. So uh, yeah, I'm back. Um, another video probably in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, maybe around some solar imaging. We'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, and I will see you in the next video sometime.